how do you power a tiny island? We're here in one of the remotest parts of Southeast Asia in a place called Raja Ampat, Indonesia. And something I've noticed is that power poverty is a real thing in places like this. I've seen a few things that worry me when it comes to the electrics and I wanted to share them with you guys because maybe we can do something to help. Make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into the video. So here in Raja Ampat, there are these things called homestays. Basically, it's where a local family who own part of or an entire small island, to earn some money, they invite you to stay with them in their home, essentially. And this one is one of the most remote northern homestays that exists. And this is our base for the next five days. Last night, the electricity came on, comes on about 6.45 p.m and the lights were flickering and there was a really loud generator <sighs> so i thought i'd investigate and let me show you what i found so as you can see they really kind of work in a traditional way here so they're building the homestays there currently just out of the spare palm tree leaves which they carefully cut into the right shape and there are coconuts everywhere. Here behind me, we've got the, uh, the facility. So the, there's the kitchen there, and there's the shower and toilet over there. And then there's uh, the dining room over there where we have our dinner. And as I say, we've got the whole place to ourselves right now. There are no other tourists here. Um, but this is really where the locals live too, you know? So they've got their little house there. There's the girls here behind me playing some games. Oh, they're cooking. What are they cooking? Wow, what are you cooking? <laughs> yeah, looks nice. By the way, I just want to apologize for not looking like a normal smart artisan electrician. Uh, I am on holiday and I've barely been able to look in a mirror for the last three weeks. So I'm aware that I look like something off a survivor show. You're gonna to have to just forgive me this once because when you are showering out of a bucket and uh, you've not had access to hot water for over three weeks, this is what you look like. Wow, okay. bravo, bravo. <laughs> so most of the cooking is done on fire and during the day there is no electricity but at night we do have electricity from 6.45 p.m. until about midnight and it all comes from this generator here. So essentially what we've got here is the windings uh, of the generator which creates electricity so very small little petrol tank. The petrol tank runs a motor which then spins and generates electricity through this cable here. This cable goes to this plug here, and then from there, the whole island is wired through this one plug. Now that generator looks to me like it's decades old, and the fact that all of these people are relying on electricity from that, which looks like it's been jerry-rigged to work again multiple times, it just kind of saddens me really. But also the fact that there's just these beautiful children running around with wires, bare wires exposed everywhere. It worries me a little bit. Looks like he knows about the generator and, and knows how to repair it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is follow the wires and we'll take my little friend with me and we'll see where they go and how a tiny island is wired. So as I said, the first stop is this plug, then it wires off of this, around and round, and then we have our first cable joint here. Uh, exposed wires twisted together. So we've got the main plug, and then off of that, they've basically stripped the wire back a little bit. You've got exposed copper on the live and neutral, 
and then they've twisted a bit of fine stranded flex around that bare copper in order to power this. So this cable here goes around and up and then uh, we've got another joint here which they've carefully insulated with a little bit of uh, a plastic bag then it goes up here and over presumably into the kitchen so in the kitchen here we've got a cable coming over and then they've just twisted the wires together again here for this light so they've got a light bulb there and then that gives them light in the kitchen and it's an LED light bulb and it's just uh, wired off a little bit of flex that's just joined together here. Now, I wanna to talk to you about something briefly which is quite important to me because I've noticed something in the YouTube statistics recently which is that 74% of you who watch our videos regularly are not subscribed. And that doesn't make sense, you see. If you wanna ride the artisan swing regularly and enjoy a constant stream of our videos, if you've ever enjoyed one of our videos or got value out of it in the past, it really helps if you subscribe. Because the bigger our channel grows, the more opportunities we've, we have to do videos like this, to push the boundaries, to do things a little bit more exciting and different, which hopefully will result in even better videos for you guys. So just do me a favor and hit subscribe, and then we can move on with the video. So our friend has brought us fresh coconuts and he's gonna cut them open for us. Amazing. Oh, I can make us see. Oh, I love this place. Look at that. Right, so that is literally a fresh coconut from the tree. And time for a drink. Mmm. It's very nice, it's very good. Thank you. This is literally just off the tree behind our, our place. And I've asked them if they'll take me fishing this afternoon. I wanna see how the locals do their fishing. So I'm gonna jump on the boat with them at four o'clock and go fishing. One of the cool things about experiencing island life like this, you know, it's like you really get to see how the locals live, warts and all, including the beautiful fresh coconut juice, but also including some shocking electrics, which really makes me quite sad. Well, that coconut was amazing. So I'm now feeling thoroughly refreshed, ready to carry on searching some crazy electrics. So there's a lot of like loose ends of wires and stuff here. I'm not quite sure <coughs> if they're live or not. So like that one, oh, okay, that's just a loose piece of wire. So that's not doing anything. This one comes out of the ground here and it's quite thick actually. It's like aluminium conductors or something. Uh, quite thick, but again, it's not doing anything. Um, but then like here, um, there's a cable <coughs> coming under the ground and then they've twisted the wires together here. Again, they've kind of split off and then it comes up here and then it goes... <laughs> oh, this is mad. Uh, yeah, so that's how they do cable joints here. I mean, they basically just hooked the copper wire over each end and then just sort of hooked it together. And it's quite corroded, so it's clearly got quite wet at some point. So then the other cable from this junction, it's again one of those thick ones, and it goes over here, and presumably, okay, then it goes overhead, and it goes over to there. So I'm guessing that it might be powering our homestay, which is literally just uh, over there in the distance. Inside the toilet here, you've got one light bulb, so that's what that uh, crazy hooked wire is feeding. And it's just feeding a light bulb that does both the shower and the toilet. And here is the toilet, which you flush with a bucket of water. And you can't flush toilet paper, so the toilet paper goes in the corner there. 
and then the shower is very similar it's basically a bucket of water and you pour it over yourself to have a little wash and there's a little mirror in the corner there over here is the water supply so down here is the well and obviously it's not that deep it's for about two or three meters so they've got this bucket that they can basically bring up water with it's salty water so this is what we wash ourselves with and flush the toilet with it's a little bit salty but slightly less salty than the sea and then what they do is they pour it into here and then it goes down this is a little bit higher than that uh, cistern in there so the water then goes down and into the cistern and it fills the cistern up so what i want to know is that cable that's kind of slinging between the trees uh, what does it do is that the cable that's powering our apartment looks like another junction box here well, when I say junction box, I use the term extremely loosely. Another bunch of wires expertly twisted together, I might say. So they've used what I call the hook and cook method. Basically, you hook the two wires together, then you cook another wire off of it. So they've got these thick aluminium wires that they've kind of hooked together here, and then they've cooked off of it with this this uh, wire now it's a, it's not flex it looks like flex but it's actually solid core cable it's a bit like um, fp type cable that we use in the uk and they all go off uh over here it looks like this one probably goes to okay just goes to a bare wire hanging at the end of the tree so i'm guessing that they had a light there at some point and then it broke so the hook and cook method continues with some bare copper exposed live conductors here, some more there, and it trails along the floor here. And then what have we got here? Oh yeah, another little junction box. They've taped that up nicely. The old uh, twisty twisty and a bit of tape there. And then that trails over to here. Okay, so we've got another hook and cook. There's a cable going into this homestay, which presumably is for the socket and light inside. And there's another little light bulb holder here, which is not currently in use. And another wire goes off here. I think and that's what's powering our apartment. Now you might be wondering what size cable this is. I mean, this is actually really thin. It's a audio, ah, oh, audio cable. <laughs> Classic. Okay, so this is a 2075 high quality audio cable sound quest quality so 2075 i presume that's two times 0.75 square millimeters conductor uh, cross-sectional area and it goes over to our apartment but it looks like there's another hook and cook in between so then from that little hook and cook setup we come into our apartment and the flex just comes up through the floor here a couple of nails to hook it up and then goes into this multi socket setup and then from there into a light switch and from the light switch into the light so we have no circuit protection no rcds no earthing no fuses nothing and exposed wires everywhere now these huts are built absolutely beautifully with these amazing patterns of palm fronds carefully woven together it's quite an art form what they do but they've clearly been trained on traditional installation methods for something like this and they've clearly not been trained on safe working practices with electrics so here's the thing guys i nearly just tripped over this cable here on the floor with bare copper ends lying down there and i'll be honest what i've seen here worries me it worries me a lot because there are kids running around here have they educated their kids on the dangers of electrics i don't know maybe they have my gut feeling is probably not unless somebody dies or gets severely injured maybe that lesson is not going to be learned i don't want that to happen the other problem is i've not got any tools with me i've not got any safe junction boxes i've not got any vargo connectors you know i would love if i had my toolbox here with some vargos and some ip rated boxes i would love to just jump in here and make this safe and it wouldn't take long a couple of hours and i would have all the electrics here 10 times safer than what they are now
in order to run a, a business where tourists are going to come and want to charge their phones up and have a little bit of light in the evening they need electricity the locals although they could probably survive without electricity they still benefit from it we've seen them sitting in the evenings huddled around a light bulb having a conversation now if they had no electric light probably they just have to go to bed as soon as it gets dark so electricity is a first world perk in places like this but actually it's more than that it becomes kind of an essential and i would love to be able to see them expand this island to accept more people they'll need electricity to do that but also i just i just don't want to see these kids ending up getting hurt let me know in the comments what you would do to solve this situation i mean that generator is just on its dying days you should hear it You know, if there was a funeral song for generators, that would be it. I think this must be a whale, like spine bone or something, like a, a vertebra of a whale, because it's huge. That's, that can't be a cow. It's got to be a whale vertebra, surely. Let me know in the comments if you know what it is. So this island is beautiful. The sea is crystal clear. It's full of fish, and I mean full. I went snorkeling yesterday. As soon as I got in the water, I bumped into a shoal of thousands of fish we've seen the dolphins just cruising around we've seen many many birds fish eagles it is nature's paradise here but the electrics are far from paradisaic so i've been doing a lot of thinking on this island because there's not a lot to do and there's quite a lot of time to kill the electricity on this island is shockingly dangerous and i'm really worried that one of those kids one day they're going to just step on one of those life wires or they're going to touch it because they're curious and they don't know what the dangers are and they're going to get hurt or even killed so then i thought well what if we you know do a fun a go fund me get them a new generator and junction boxes and wire everything up safely i thought well yeah that could be great too you know and i'd be happy to donate all of the ad revenue from this video towards doing that but then again that kind of doesn't really solve the problem because i'm surrounded by hundreds if not thousands of other islands where the same thing is probably happening in fact we've visited four islands so far on this trip in raja ampat and the electrics on all of them has been dodgy this is probably the worst but all of them have had serious safety issues with the wiring so then I thought, well, what could we do to help all of these islands and all of the islands around the world where electrics are not safe? And that made me think about education because really education is the key to getting people out of power poverty like this. Of course, they need money, but actually it should be possible with very little resources to educate people on how to wire stuff up safely and educate people on the dangers so i'd love to know all your thoughts in the comments about how you think we could do this i'm thinking maybe even make a, a video series and see if we could share it out i know our videos are really usually directed to uk electrics but what if we tried to reach the entire planet because bizarrely all of the people on these small islands They've all got access to a mobile phone and some kind of internet connection and they all know what YouTube is. So we could create a series of videos, very basic, very simple tutorials for how to wire up safely in places like this. But that's just me thinking out loud. Together, I think we can come up with maybe an even better solution. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying these little series of videos where I showcase electrics in Southeast Asia, I'm enjoying making them. So I'd love to make more for you. So if you subscribe and if you hit the thumbs up button, that will be taken as a signal for me to make more videos like this. And if you have enjoyed this video, but you've not seen some of the other videos that I've made, I'll leave a card here where you can watch a video about me exploring electrics in Thailand and I'll leave another card here where you can see how to power a small island in the Gili Islands in Indonesia. But either way, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.